In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the audio device setup. It's really important we get an audio device working so we can hear playback as we start to work with traction. We'll get into more details later on, but right now let's do the basics. And before I do that, I want to show you something about pop-up help. Now pop-up help will show you these little help pop-ups as you point to different sections on the screen, which is great, but I'm going to disable it for this video. And the way you do that is click help, turn off pop-up help. That way they won't come up while I'm trying to explain things. If you ever want to see pop-up help with it disabled, you can just point to the thing you're interested in and hit F10 like that. And that will pull up a context sensitive pop-up help message. Now let's get into the audio device setup. First, click the settings tab and then go to the audio devices page by clicking right here. It's the first item on the top of the page. Now this varies a little bit with Windows. So first I'm gonna show you the way it looks on Mac. Output and input is where you actually select your audio device. Now assuming you have any necessary drivers installed and the device is hooked up, it should appear in the list here. On OS X, you can select a different device for the output and input. Now, if you're just getting started with traction, I strongly suggest that you select the same device for the output and the input. I'm gonna select my USB Pre 2. It's a simple two in, two out device. Now I've selected for the input. Now I'm gonna select it also for the output. It's got a convenient test button here. If I click this, it will send some sound out to the output. And we'll, let's see if we can hear it. There's a little test tone. We know we're pretty much good to go at this point. If I open a project, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to the project page and select one of our demo tunes, Subways, and I'll double click to open the edit. Now if I play back, I should be able to hear this. All right, so that's pretty much what we need to do at this point. But let's take a look at some of the other parameters on the audio devices page. We can set the sample rate right here. I have it set to 44,100 hertz, which is sort of the default for digital audio. That's the sample rate that CDs use, and I would suggest choosing that unless you've got a reason to choose a different sample rate. Now the audio buffer size by default will come in at 512 on OS X. It will come in at 256 on Windows, and that gives you 11 milliseconds of latency. That 11 milliseconds is a very short period of time, but if you're playing, say, a MIDI controller into a virtual instrument, that is the amount of lag between when you hit a note and when you hear the note. Same thing if you're working with a virtual guitar amp or amp simulator. When you play a note on your guitar, this is the amount of time it will take to go through and process that audio. It's a balance between getting the least noticeable latency for virtual instruments or guitar amp sims, which you could get by lowering this value. Often something like 256 will work well, which takes it down to five milliseconds. But if it's not playing back cleanly, then you can increase that maybe all the way out to 1024 samples, which gives you 23 milliseconds of latency. In any event, this is the primary way that you manage latency or manage if you're not getting clean playback. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it set at the default 512. Now there's additional things down here that you can set like the number of CPU cores to use. There's also a low latency monitoring mode and these settings are related to that. There's also a setting over here that says use 64-bit math when mixing. I normally leave this on. If you have a nice fast computer, you can leave that on. It gives you a little bit more headroom in the mix engine when mixing together a lot of tracks. You're probably not gonna notice much difference either way with the sound or the CPU usage, but if you have an older computer, you would turn that off. By default, it's off. I usually leave that turned on. I also wanna point out, if you are playing around with these sliders and you just don't know how they should be set, then you can get these back to the factory defaults by clicking reset to defaults. If you leave these unclicked, it will reset all of these settings. And if you add in these options, it will reset some of the things here in the input and output list like this. Now this is the basic audio setup for Mac. Let's just take a look at how it looks on a PC. Now on PC, we can choose from different kinds of audio devices. I would recommend choosing the ASIO device, but you could also choose from Windows Audio or Direct Sound. Now the built-in sound card in your computer or laptop might use these, but if you're using a professional audio interface, you're going to always wanna choose the ASIO type driver. Now, once you've done that, then you can choose one from those connected to your computer using this right here where it says device. You can't choose the input and output separately. You just choose the device, which is really clear. You also have a button for the test tone 
the sample rate and the buffer size are very similar, except the default buffer size on Windows is 256 samples. There's also an extra button here that says show this device's control panel. On some, but not all, audio interfaces, that will actually open a little control panel to set the buffer size. Some audio interfaces don't allow you to set the buffer size or the sample rate through software this way. You have to do it through their own little panel. And in that case, this will open it sometimes. Otherwise, you might have to find that panel on your computer, open it. You can see that there's a lot more interesting and some powerful things on this page, but we're not going to get into them. They're not essential to getting started with traction. We'll come back to those later, but for now, we've got audio playing back and we're ready to go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.